it is my honor to stand before you today and represent my office and all of the first responders gathered here this morning for this important ceremony. In this video, I am going to talk a little bit about where I was on September 11, on 9-11. We are looking at the 20th anniversary today and I had an opportunity to attend an event this morning and I just want to take some time this evening to reflect on what happened, where I was, what I was sort of experiencing in my life at that time. And now 20 years later, I guess how different the world is. We hope the tolling of this bill is representative of all emergency responders. On 9-11, I was a third year law student at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. My husband and I were pregnant with our daughter and she would actually be born the next month. So I was eight months pregnant. That particular morning did not start out any different from any other morning. My husband was actually working from home at this time and he had gotten up from in front of the TV and he had gone into the bathroom. Now he prefers to watch local news and I was more of a national news connoisseur. And once he had gotten up to leave the room, I switched the channel. <laughs> yes, I took it as an opportunity to change the TV to the station that I wanted to watch. I did not expect to see what I saw. At that point in time, I believe the first tower had just been hit and they didn't really know what was going on. And so it was just like, oh, there's some flames. We think a plane ran into it. And I called my husband and I said, come out here. There's something going on with the towers. And he came back into the room as we watched the second plane fly into the second tower. Like most people, we had no clue what was going on. You're just watching something on TV. You don't really know. You're trying to understand. You're trying to process what you're seeing. And we didn't know what we were looking at. I watched for as long as I could because eventually I had to leave and go to class. But I remember driving over to campus and walking up to the building and just thinking, wow, there's some people that are probably just driving around in their cars now and they don't even know anything that is going on. I went to my class. I wish I could remember which class it was. I, I want to say it was Trust in Estates, but I don't think that's what it was. At the end of the class, our class president came up to the front and he told us that both of the towers had collapsed. We went into a smaller room. They had set up a TV and we watched just whatever was on as they were talking about what had happened. We found out at that point the Pentagon had been hit and that there had been another plane. There was just a, a feeling, there was a real sense of insecurity and fear, not knowing what was going to happen next. It was, I don't really know how to describe it, to be honest, looking back 20 years later. When I got back home and for the next few days, literally 
my channel stayed on national news at that point, that was pretty much all we watched all day when I was at home. And then at night, like in the evening, you were, you know, you hear people say you're glued to the television. That is one time I can say I felt like I was literally like cemented in, like I was part of the television because you were so engrossed and wanted to know what was going on. And that was pretty much how you got most of your information. There were people who were on the scene and who were reporting what was going on. And it was such a tragedy. It actually got to the point where after a few nights of that, it, was, it got to be maybe like four or five nights, I had to cut myself off. I mean, I was literally, it was the last thing I looked at before I went to bed at night. And I just didn't feel like it was healthy, you know, for me to have all of this negative energy. And here I was eight months pregnant. It was very different. A few months later, one of my law school classmates and I participated in a moot court competition. It was at Seton Hall, which is in New Jersey. We flew up <laughs> and found out that we had gone up the wrong weekend. My father was just like, okay, so two of you got that wrong? How did two of you get that wrong? But yes, both of us got that wrong. I asked her if she wanted to go to the platform viewing area. And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, they have a platform viewing area where you can go up and look at the site. I don't know anything about getting around New York. Her, apparently her fiance was from that area. Like I think he was from New Jersey. So she knew exactly, you know, we like pulled it up and, and looked at it and figured out where it was. She knew exactly how to get there. So we totally lucked out. And the weather was great. Cause you have to remember, you know, um, that was September by the time we got there a few months later, it was pretty chilly. I, I wanna say maybe it was like March or something like that. It was very interesting to arrive in New York, so close to what had happened. And I took, I took quite a few pictures, but the thing that I remember the most, I mean, there were all of these buildings, you could see, like you could see all the damage that had been done. You could see the buildings that were draped over. But the thing about it was you could see all of the debris, like the ashes and all of that from the buildings, you could see it all along the curb. So when you walked along the street, you could see this everywhere. Like there was no way for you to, to even walk down the street and not be aware of what had happened because the devastation was so present. We had a chance to see the church. There were flags on the poles thanking the first responders, so many of whom went into those towers when they were on fire, so many of those that did not come out of those towers. It was a very it was a very tough thing to sort of watch and to, to take in and to experience. It's 20 years later. I don't think I've had um, anyone in my, my immediate family serve um, in a fire department or in a police department. Now I have like cousins, their father served. I have friends whose parents were officers, but no one in my immediate family, those who have served, have served in the military. My father was in the Air Force. My younger cousin served in Iraq. I have friends that I went to high school with who served. 
Then I had another great uncle who I never even knew. He served. I want to welcome you to our 9-11 20 year remembrance ceremony. It's wonderful to see our responders in the crowd, uh, our residents, and people that came to join us today um, as we think about 9-11-2001. It's a pretty somber day, but it's really nice to be able to come together and share our experiences and just really think about those who gave their lives, uh, those heroes who never stopped uh, and, and never wanted to leave the building. So there are a lot of people in this country who sign up to serve in a way that can be the ultimate sacrifice. And today was a day to sort of reflect on that 20 years later. This morning, I attended an event that we had here in our city. One of our county commissioners spoke about where she was on that day. She said she had actually gone to the airport. She was actually supposed to be going to DC that day and, and she was on the plane at the airport and they rushed everybody off the plane. You know, and she said her son called her wanting to know where she was. And she said, well, I'm at the airport. And he was like, well, what are you doing there? <laughs> he was like, oh my gosh, please leave there and go home. But yeah, it, it changed a lot for a lot of people. 2,996 people lost their lives that day, if I had my numbers correct. And I just wanna take a moment to say to their families, thank you. And it's 9-11, 2021, but we will never forget.